Today we're going to make, taste, and rank the most popular dish in every single state in America. Yes, all 50. The USA is a melting pot of food and culture, and everyone seems to think that their state has the best food. While some states have their well-known favorites, some just straight up have no food culture. Sorry. Like, what is that, Delaware? Here's how this works. You, the audience, either in my YouTube community or my Instagram DMs, voted for what dish or food best represents your state. Now that we have our food, each state will be ranked on the most famous tier list on the internet. Now, a state can rank anywhere between A through F, and if it's truly God tier, then you have a special seat on the S tier list. At the end, every state we rank as S tier will compete in a showdown to determine which state has the best dish. But first, I have the most important announcement of the year. My cookbook is officially out today. And the link's in the description. I didn't want to make just another cookbook. I worked really hard on making something that was the first cookbook of its time, focused on the one thing that no one ever talks about, which is texture. Dozens of different recipes, techniques, things like Nashville Hot Honey Karage, brownies, greatest mac and cheese of your life. I hope you like it. The link's in the description. You can buy it now if you want it. That being said, on with the video. We're starting with one of the strangest named dishes I can think of. Number one, Utah funeral potatoes. It's basically a cheesy potato casserole. You get some cornflakes, toss in butter, lightly season, put on top of a creamy, cheesy, shredded potato mixture, and baked at 350 for an hour, and there it is. Certainly looks like it should be served at a funeral. I'm gonna say C. It's not as bad as it looks. D. That's a D. This would be close to an F if it wasn't for the crunch on top. I'm sorry. Our very first ranking of the day as a D tier. Sorry, but I'm also not sorry, Utah. Number two, New Jersey pork roll breakfast sandwich. I heard that there's a big argument about whether or not this is Taylor ham. I don't want to get involved. Sear your sliced pork product on both sides. Place it on the bottom bun. American cheese on top of your pork. Cook your egg in your pork fat. Season it lightly. Place a fried egg on top. Close it up. And well, the cross section doesn't look too bad. That's an F. Oh my God, it really is that salty. Holy it doesn't taste like ham. It tastes like preservative. <laughs> I hate the Taylor ham, but I love eggs, cheese, and bread, so it's getting a C. The Taylor ham's starting to grow on me. I'm still gonna give it a C, though. New Jersey lands at a C tier. Moving on to number three, Ohio Cincinnati-style chili. I can't tell you how many times people have asked for this. <sighs> And we're finally here. It's literally skyline can of chili over spaghetti with raw onion and shredded yellow cheddar. I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> to me, it smells like a white suburban mother's idea of char -shoe pork. If an Italian saw this, I genuinely think that they would call the police immediately. I was born in Ohio and I fully disagree with this. Nah. Nope. F. F. I'm gonna go D. I think Ohio is like a beautiful state. If this ceased to exist, I would not care. Out of the hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sauces that can go on a pasta, why this? That is an F. That made me sad. And we have our first F tier. Real sorry, Ohio. Well, hopefully number four does better for Minnesota tater tot hot dish, which is quite literally Great Depression era, beef, onions, vegetables, cheese, with actual tater tots placed directly on top, organized beautifully, of course, baked at 350 for one hour. It comes out, and I'm not gonna lie, it does look kind of nice. I'm here for the tots. C. C for me. Very middle of the line. It's average. I think it's a solid B, but I guess that gives us our average at a C placement. Number five, Oklahoma fried onion burger. Ball of beef on a plancha, onions on top, smash, season, sear, flip, and cheese. Repeat with the second patty, place them on a sauce bun, and that's your burger. Onions are good on a burger, but when you smash them into the patty, I feel like it takes it up to here. It's something special. It's really special. It might be an S for me. It's an S. It's an S for me too. Too classy. S. Which is exactly why number six is yet another burger, New Mexico Green Chili Cheeseburger. Look, you guys voted for this. So same concept, smash patty, top with green chilies, top with cheese, melt the cheese, do the same with the other patty, mayo up your bun, layer it up, and we eat. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's a lot going on. I'm gonna give it an A because it could be improved upon. It tasted good. It's just really not a fun experience for me. I'm gonna give it a B. I'll say it's A. At the same time, it could be an S tier. It could. Because ultimately, it's just about putting green chilies on a burger. So it's between an A and an S. The average rating says this is an A. Now, while we're in the Midwest, we're gonna move to number seven, Wisconsin fried cheese curds. It's quite literally cheese curds that are breaded and fried. That's nice. When I left the Midwest, the one thing I was scared to leave behind was cheese curds. And I'm glad we have it here today. And it's always an S in my book. S, it's an S. It's a B, it's a small mozzarella stick. Done with you. I'm gonna join you, Cam. This is a chowed mozzarella stick. That's all it is. But by popular choice, it's an S tier, I guess. 
Moving on to number eight, West Virginia's official food, the pepperoni roll. I think we got mostly votes for pepperoni roll. You punch down a proof dough, you divide it into eight pieces, stretch them out in a rectangle, add your pepperoni, some mozzarella, roll it up into sort of a log. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't make pepperoni rolls. This seems right. I'm guessing here. Bake it 400 for 15 to 20 minutes, let it cool slightly, and now we taste test. But we're gonna cut it with my patented knife book. Did you know that this is available today? The link's in the description, please go order it. Knife not included. I just did this. Don't Special do that. edition. Don't do this. Not much going on, give it a C. I'm giving it a B. I would eat it again. I'd eat it again. I just wouldn't be that excited. I'm gonna give it a solid C. So, C tier. Now we move a little further south for number nine, North Carolina, a pulled pork sandwich with a Lexington style barbecue sauce. That's vinegar plus tomatoes and spices. It's a wee bit spicy, bruv, but not too much. Now I know, wham wham, some people like the tomatoless Eastern style vinegar sauce, but this is what we're doing. I have a long opinion about vinegary barbecue sauces on pulled pork. It's good. It's a beat. That's true. I was going to say that. Even if I was in North Carolina, I probably wouldn't be looking for pulled pork sandwiches. I think pulled pork in general, aside from it being attached to North Carolina, is just B tier generally. I'd agree with that. So that came in at a B tier. Number 10, Hawaiian Spam Masubi. It is quite literally the only canned meat I accept because it's not canned meat, it's its own thing. You're gonna need a Musubi mold, a half cup piece of nori, layer in some rice, some sweet soy glazed Spam. It, I mean, this is just a beautiful thing. Some more rice, press it down, wrap that puppy up and split in half. I mean, it's beautiful right there, brother. I love, love Spam Masubi. I mean, look at that. It's a perfect food. It's got a nice cross section. It's tough. This is really hard, but I'd say there's nothing wrong with this being a solid A tier. A plus plus. So close to S. Very close. I think it would be an S if we were from Hawaii. So I'll give it an A. Coming in at a ripe A tier. On to number 11, Wyoming uh, elk. If you're confused, so am I. This is what the people of Wyoming voted for. So we went for a Wyoming elk steak, which is apparently pretty good for you. High in protein, zinc, B12, but contains a chef's worst nightmare. Low fat. Season it lightly, salt and pepper, seared it, and basted it with a nice herby garlic butter. It's pretty gamey, but I, I I like game. I'm gonna give it a D. I'm not a person to really eat game. I can see where the appreciation would come for it, but for me, it's an F. I like wild game, it's great, sure. But to represent out of all the foods that are here that we're gonna eat today, this is an F, I guess. F for no fat. Now remember, just because it's F doesn't mean it's bad. It's just a comparison to all the other foods that we have to eat today. It just didn't taste that special. So let's amp this up with number 12, Texas. This is where we live. And it's not Whataburger, okay? And whoever voted for Whataburger to represent Texas, I'm gonna find you and ship you out of here, brother. Out of the hundreds of votes we got on Texas, the majority of them went towards brisket. If you talk about enjoyment of food, things melting in your mouth is very high up on that list. Good brisket never fails to do that. I'd put this in the A tier. I'm going A as well. If you live in Texas and you eat smoked brisket once or twice a month, kinda like, it's an A tier. If you're from out of town, it's an S tier. That being said, for us, we're giving brisket a solid, highly, highly rated A tier. Number 13, Washington Cedar Plank Salmon. Apparently they cook their famous Pacific Salmon on cedar planks. The food culture there seems to lean this way. Not sure how I feel about it, but we're gonna try it. That's so good. It has such a good smokiness to it. So I'm gonna go with A. I'm gonna give it an A also. In comparison to smoked salmon, this is really close. It's not exactly the same. I think this is an impressive thing to eat and anyone who has not had this should eat it. We gotta give it an A for me. A shocking A tier. Number 14, Arkansas biscuits with chocolate gravy. This is probably one of the worst things I've ever seen. There's no way this is gonna rank highly. This might be the most American thing we have. Arkansas, is this a dessert? It looks like one. I mean, one thing I do know is that these biscuits are great because they're from my old cookbook, which you should get my new cookbook, which is in the link in the description. Do you think this is the only food we're gonna eat that looks the same coming out as it does going in? This is amazing. You can't beat that. Wow, that works out way too well. I wanted to hate this a lot. Arkansas, holy I'm gonna say this is a well-deserved S for me. Whoa, what? How is that not an S tier if we just ate a whole one without even thinking about it? I'll go S tier for whoa, this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hate that this is so simple <laughs> and dumb. I don't wanna give it an S. I'm gonna give it an A++++ plus 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 almost S because part of me just doesn't feel right about this, but it doesn't matter. Somehow, Arkansas wrestled its way into S tier. Yeehaw! Moving on to number 15, Missouri. Toasted ravioli, which uh, apparently is a St. Louis favorite. It's just ravioli that's been breaded and fried till good old GBD, that's golden brown delicious. Gotta be good. I'm gonna go C. I'm gonna go B, I kinda like this. D, I'm sure it can be better. I just don't need it to be like that. So we'll average it out at C tier. 
Number 16, Nevada, which you'd be shocked how hard it was to find a dish for this place because it's a desert. And weirdly enough, the number one voted item was shrimp cocktail. That's okay. I wouldn't put it all the way up in an A. This is really boring from a culinary standpoint. This is just a shrimp cocktail. I think it's a D. So we got a D, a B, and an A. Yeah. So I think that that probably evens it out to what, a C? Number 17, Delaware. Scrapple. So apparently this is actually from Pennsylvania, but Delaware loves it so much that they voted for it. To represent them, I'm sorry if you don't like this choice. Neither did we. Smelly deli. Oh, God. I don't want to eat this. Gosh. Do you know the way throw up feels in your mouth when it's coming up? That's the way that feels. F. F. Get better food. F tier. Number 18, Rhode Island, calamari. You should know what this is. It's quite literally little fried calamari. Toss in a little garlic butter, some hot peppers. Eh, sounds good. I don't like calamari, but it kind of just tastes like anything fried. Honestly, one of your best takes ever. I was trying to figure out how to describe it. That's exactly what it is. I'm gonna give a strong, powerful C. I'm going A. I grew up in the Northeast. I think this is fire. It's a really strong, powerful B. So we'll average that out at B. Number 19, South Dakota Chislik. I don't know if I should be saying that word out loud, but hey, whatever you say, South Dakota. It's seasoned lamb on skewers and, well, deep fries. Sometimes people use mutton or venison, but it's just seasoned and thrown directly in a deep fryer. That's it. Not mad at that at all. These are pretty good. I'd give it an A. There's nothing wrong with it. I'll give it a B. If there was something that was traditionally supposed to go with this, I would give it a higher rating than I'm about to give it. I'm gonna give that a solid B. So we average out at a B. Number 20, North Dakota. We finally made it to the other Dakota. This is called Nofla, Knofla, Nofle. You guys know I'm not great with pronunciations. Soup. Long story short, it's a creamy German chicken and dumpling soup. I have a good feeling about this one. God damn. Very good. I'm gonna give this an A, but it's a very enjoyable A. It's an A. It's creamy, it's salty, it's rich. It's also surprisingly balanced. But what I love about it, what's different about this than any other soup, is these chewy dumplings that are in there. This is an A that aspires to be an S. That came in at an A tier. Number 21, Alabama barbecue chicken with white barbecue sauce. That's a thing. I have always thought white barbecue sauce was illegal with my mom being from Texas and, well, us living in Texas. But hey, we'll give it a try. You got a nice smoked chicken drizzled generously with a mayo vinegar based white barbecue sauce, which apparently keeps the chicken from drying out. I don't know how true that is. It's actually really good. I'm into that. For me, that's an A. It's a B minus. It's close to a C. It's good. It's just, if I were to never have that again, I wouldn't care. B. B tier. Number 22, Virginia, which everybody voted for country ham. That was it, didn't vote for anything else. So we decided, well, <laughs> let's give Virginia a helping hand and try to at least put it on a sandwich, which come to find out, it's served as a sandwich on a buttered biscuit traditionally. D. I don't like that. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a D. Like if I had to eat it, I would eat it and not hate it, but only if I had to eat it. Oh my God, I'm shocked, a D tier? I'm not shocked. Number 23, Iowa, which is uh, the Iowa chop. It's just a pork porterhouse. I don't know how Iowa is allowed to claim this. That's all it is. You sear it, you flip it, maybe you base it with some butter, fresh thyme, rosemary, bay leaf, and let it rest. It's gonna be good, I mean, but it's just a pork chop. Before we taste this, please understand. I know some Iowans, Iowa, Iowas, whatever they're called, I don't know, I'm sorry, also voted for pork tenderloin sandwich. Unfortunately, that was way outvoted for Indiana, which we'll talk about next. But first, let's taste test Iowa. It's a pork shop. I give it a C. It's a C yeah. as well. I agree with that. A C tier. So moving on to number 24, Indiana, which is, yes, the pork tenderloin sandwich. Listen, Iowa, before you get mad, we can pretend that you also got this too. This item got votes on both of these states, which is quite literally bottom bun, yellow mustard, massive, like comedically large piece of fried pork. Raw onion, mustard on top bun, lit it and eat it. Uh, I know this looks like a joke, Google it, it's a real thing. I think it's a fun eating experience actually, because like you could nibble on the outside and get just pork and then nibble on the inside, get a sandwich. It's a good sandwich. It's a good sandwich. The best version of this sandwich would get a B. Alaska smoked salmon spread is next. Start by mixing cream cheese and salmon. Add some sliced chives, brunoise shallot, seasoned with Tabasco, or shirt, and lemon juice, a little salt. Pack that into a ramekin beautifully. Maybe some little crostinis? This is a really good snack. To me, it's not like a top meal out of 50 states. It's an A for me. That's absolutely beautiful. Even if you separate this from the dip and you just call it salmon, salmon is an incredible thing. And it comes from Alaska. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world. And in this form, it's incredible. I think just because of the significance, I gotta give it an S. I would take away an S from another dish, so this could also be us. I would take cheese curds off for this. There are other things that are like cheese curds. There's nothing like this. This is an irreplaceable thing. A mind-boggling listing at S tier? So sorry, but Wisconsin gets demoted to an A tier. We had a general consensus decision to go ahead and demote it. Wisconsin, I'm sorry. 
Number 26, Michigan, the pasty. It's a weird name. It reminds me a lot of English baked pastry. And that's what this is. It's a baked pastry filled with beef, veggies. It looks like it could be good. Whoa, okay. Super crispy and tender on the outside. It's buttery, it's flaky. It's kind of like all the elements of a great hand pie, but it's savory. I give it an A for all those reasons. I'll go with an A also. Where's this from, Michigan? Specifically, the Upper Peninsula. Upper Peninsula, shout out. That's a solid A. That comes out at an A tier. Number 27, Colorado. Pork chili verde stew. This seems like a really interesting choice for Colorado. Hatch chilies roasted, poblanos, tomatillo, some lime simmered nice and low and slow. That's great. That's great. That's really good. That's an S for me. That's an S for me. I did think. I don't know. I don't know if I want to give it an S. I feel like I could only eat so much of it until I'm like, I'm done. I'm giving it an A. But I'm outnumbered. I love it. Colorado S tier. Number 28, Maine, the lobster roll. We all love a good lobster roll. This is a legendary sandwich, roll, hot dog. What is this? Toasted split top bun, mandatory. In goes our lobster, which was heated gently in butter. Add a little bit of chives, maybe some lemon. Now let's taste. It's a regional specialty, and I think specialties have a really high place on a tier list. This lives up to the hype. I'm gonna give it an A. I'm also gonna give it an A. It's big hunks of lobster in a roll, and it tastes good. I'm gonna give it a solid A. We have an A tier. Number 29, Connecticut, which they call this New Haven pizza, but they also pronounce it Abitz. I don't know what's going on in Connecticut. So we added a slightly more tart sauce, a little bit of Pecorino Romano, olive oil. It's very, very, very light on the cheese. Look, we're cooking this in a super hot Gosney dome to mimic the heat of the Connecticut coal ovens. Pull it out, it's charred, slightly crispy, yet foldable. Let's taste. I'm gonna go D on this because really what this is is a cheese pizza with less cheese than normal. I'm gonna go D. If you live in New Haven, just take the train to New York City. It's an hour away. <laughs> I think this is worth no more than a D. Oof, a damning D tier. Number 30, Tennessee. You might guess what this is. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's Nashville hot chicken. I love this dish. I'm gonna do my best to be unbiased. You toss your crackling fried chicken into a spicy hot seasoned oil all over the chicken legs. You do not go light on the calories here. Put it on a big, thick slice of white bread. A couple pickles and bon appetit. Go a little kick. Out of all the fried chickens in the world, I do love Nashville hot, but I'm gonna give it an A. I'm gonna agree with an A. I'd agree with the A. Delicious A. Number 31, Louisiana, gumbo. And yes, we're using my gumbo recipe. I do mix land and sea. I know a lot of people say that's a no-no. Look, I've talked to a lot of my Cajun friends. I have yet to see them not mix land and sea. Maybe they're lying, maybe it's wrong. I know the comments are gonna go crazy. Look, it is what it is. I still think this is the daddy of all soups and stews. It gets ladled nice and hot into a bowl. Big scoop of rice in the center, garnished with some green onion, maybe some chopped parsley. I'm going on the A route, but I can see it being an S. It's very good. I give it an S. It's just such a well-balanced dish. Out of all the most influential things that exist in food today, this is an S. Louisiana joins the ranks of S tier. Number 32, Mississippi, which is just fried catfish with comeback sauce. It's not that crazy. It's literally just deep fried catfish, mayo-based sauce. It's tart, it's got spices. It does taste good. I'd give it a B minus if I could, which falls on the B tier. I'm gonna give it a B. Some moods I would give this a B, some moods I'd give it a C. Right now I'm gonna give it a C. The comeback sauce is an A. Fish is a C. So I think this equalizes out to like a B tier? Number 33, Florida, the Cuban sandwich, probably one of the most famous slash iconic sandwiches known to man. Now, I don't know if this sandwich was really invented in America, but it is one of the most popular things in all of Florida, and it was the most voted for. You gotta get the right Cuban bread, mustard and pickle to your bread, Swiss cheese, ham, slow-cooked mojo pork shoulder, more cheese, butter the tops of the sandwich, and you cook it in a sandwich press until it's super flat, ultra crispy, melty, delicious, sliced at a diabolical bias. I'm gonna give it an A. That was excellent. That's better than most Cubanos I've had in Miami. And I'm gonna get dragged for that. It's an A tier sandwich, but over all the dishes, I'd say it's a B. I'll give it a B. It's an incredible sandwich, and it's definitely worth making a trip to Florida, but after 33 plates, it just didn't hit as hard as usual. Number 34, Massachusetts clam chowder, also known as New England clam chowder. This is an OG one. It's creamy, it's sweet, garnished with crispy chopped bacon, parsley, cracked pepper. It is actually one of my favorite soups. It deserves more love, but only one way to find out how much love. I've never had clam chowder before. Really? I'm what? excited, yeah. It's gotta be an S. I think it does too. That's just a classic. It's so good. It's so good. It's fire. I'm gonna go A. I feel like we're just kind of throwing S's around. In the soup liquid world, is chicken soup above this? Gumbo's above this. Regardless of Vikram's opinion, the S's have it. 
Number 35, Kentucky, Hot Brown. This looks like a demonic creature that would emerge from the magical wardrobe in a fantasy movie. And this recipe comes directly from the place that invented it, the Brown Hotel. So that's where the Hot Brown comes from. Thought it was another reference. It's slices of bread in a pan arranged like this and halves of raw tomato. Add a thick single slice of turkey. Cover with a Mornay sauce, eh, cheese sauce. Sprinkle pecorino cheese, and you blast it in the broiler, pull it out, and uh, well, I mean, it is hot and sort of brown. Top with bacon and garnish with paprika and parsley. How do you eat this? The cheese melts really well with the turkey. If you saw that on like a sandwich, it'd be a really good sandwich. Why can't they just make this a sandwich? It tastes good. It does taste good, but it's a mess. I'm gonna give that a C. I'm gonna give it a C as well. I'm gonna give it a C also. That's an easy C. Number 36, Idaho. You would think potatoes? Well, guess what was voted for? Battered steak fingers. I don't like the way that these look. It's essentially like a tempura battered piece of steak that gets deep fried. I just farted, so if you smell that, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Oh God, dude, that's bad. We didn't even eat the steak like, fingers yet. Supposedly, this is the recipe that comes from the place that created the Idaho steak finger. What I don't like about it is that it's a batter and I just don't think that that's gonna do well with uh, steak. Batter aside, this steak is so well done. I don't know how frying this was gonna make it any better. I'm gonna go with an F for this. I'm gonna give this a solid F. Ah. I'm really sorry, Idaho. Maybe leave with a potato dish next time. Now we're moving to the Midwest to try B-Rock from Kansas for number 37 and runs up from Nebraska for number 38. That's two for one. They're both very similar with beef and cabbage filled pastry pockets. But the big difference is that Kansas B-Rock is just straight cooked cabbage and the Nebraska runza is sauerkraut. Kansas B-Rock, I've never heard of this. Really reminds me of like a kolache or a klobosnik. I mean, it's good. Not a lot going on. This feels very necessity food. Like this is all you got. I'm gonna give it a C. I'll go C as well. C. Could be better. Kansas C tier. Now let's see how the Nebraska Runza fares. I'm not about the sauerkraut. That's why I'd give it a C. The acidity, mm -hmm. really like that. It's a slight step up from Kansas, but it's very similar. So I'll give it a B. I agree, I'll go with a B also. We're going with B. Number 39, Georgia. A place plentiful of incredible food. Georgia with lemon pepper wet wings. This uses my lemon pepper wet recipe. So we deep fried our wings. We toss them beautifully in our sauce. Garnish with a little bit of flaky salt. You know, it's nice. Easy S tier. S. Tangy, crispy, flavorful. That's an ultimate wing. After the second chew, my brain immediately went S. S tier. Georgia, you're always on my mind. So we're gonna follow up a heavy hitter with another heavy hitter, number 40, New York pizza. This is a big contender. I mean, it's cheese, it's pepperoni sometimes, it's parm, red pepper flakes. It's an Italian-American icon, has to be S tier. I'm gonna go A. I have no complaints about a good New York slice. I love New York pizza. I think it's nostalgic, I think it's special, I think it's one of a kind. And every time I go to New York, I get a slice. It's still a B. I'm gonna give it a B too. I think New York pizza is the worst form of pizza there is. A shocking B tier. On to number 41, Montana Huckleberry Pie. It's good, it's good. I do quite like the flavor of a huckleberry. This mm. is just like pops of freshness. It's about a B, I'm not wowed. In comparison to blueberry and blackberry, way more fun, way more diverse of a flavor, way like fruitier and rich and deep. There's a very big depth of flavor in this pie. I'm gonna give it an A. I'm gonna give it an A also. So we're gonna average out at a light A tier pie. Next up, number 42, Arizona's Sonoran Dog. Bacon wrapped, deep fried hot dogs, really extraordinarily hot weather. It's a, uh, you know, sweaty match made in heaven, I guess. We didn't have a Chicago dog in this video, but I'd do a Chicago dog over this one any day. Yeah, me too. I'd go B. S tier. What? Yeah, that is the ultimate hot dog to me. I'm gonna give that a solid C. Wow. I think this averages around a B tier. Number 43, South Carolina Shrimp Grits. <laughs> you know, good old low country boy. It's really good. It's really good. I would almost go A. I'm gonna go B. It's very enjoyable, but there is definitely a ceiling. I think this is like probably the best version of it you can get. It's close to an A, but it lives in the B category. I can go out and I can order some grits and I'm gonna enjoy it, but it has a ceiling and therefore I'm gonna give it a B, a B plus, but still a B. Number 44, New Hampshire apple cider donuts. This apparently was the only dish New Hampshireans voted for. Apple cider donuts hold a special place in my heart being from the Northeast. They're still not that great. Here's the thing, I don't need to eat another one of these again, ever. They're great, they taste good. Just give me a normal donut and put cinnamon sugar on it and call it a day. I'm gonna give it a C. I mean a C for being like decent, but nothing higher. I'm gonna give it a D for decent. So we're gonna average this out at C for New Hampshire. 
Number 45, Maryland. The Crab Cake. I was just there recently to sign literal thousands of books, which by the way, those signed copies are available now. You can click the link in the description to get one yourself. Now let's talk about these crab cakes with a wedge of lemon. They're very basic. I have eaten a lot of disappointing crab cakes, so hopefully this is not another one for the list. It's S tier. I feel like we're learning a lot about America, but it's really hard trying to differentiate between an S and an A. You take one bite of this and you're like, exceptional. That goes beyond an A. That's an S for me. Dude, that's a f that's, that's a, a whole good. ass There's a whole that's crab a, in that cake. That's a good crab cake. S tier. Moving on, number 46, Pennsylvania Philly cheesesteak. We know about Philly cheesesteak. We traveled all the way to Philly to learn everything that we could. It should rank decently. That's C tier. It's just an average sandwich. I'm gonna give this a B. Philly cheesesteaks are good, and they can be made better by adding more cheese or better beef, but ultimately, it's always gonna be capped at a good, nice, strong B. Number 47, Oregon Marionberry Pie. Oregon, this is the most Oregon pie I can think of because it contains berries that were literally invented, apparently, in a college in Oregon. I don't like the texture of this. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna go C, just very average pie experience. I'm also gonna give it a C. To me, this pie was pretty one note. Pie crust is great, it's seasoned nicely, the sugar levels are good. But from a flavor perspective, because the only thing you're relying on is the marionberry that's in here, it's a D. Just go get blueberries and call it a day. I'm sorry, Oregon, you're, you're great. My wife loves you. That's a D pie. Number 48, Illinois. This was tough. The Italian beef sandwich beat out Chicago hot dogs by two whole votes and deep dish pizza by one vote. So I guess it's Mr. Beef time, baby. Shout out to Mr. Beef. We love each other, by the way, big kisses. So you have thinly sliced roast beef heated in jus, placed in a roll, topped with a relish called jardinera. The whole sandwich is heavily dipped in the jus. Now let's rank. Mr. Beef, if you're watching, I love you. Why don't you ever send me pictures like you used to? Oh yeah. What do you think I'm gonna say? Italian beef is what most people are gonna say is the top dish in Illinois, and I can stand by it being an S tier. Vikram's from Illinois. This is true. So, mm -hmm. F. I'm gonna give it an A. I would've rather had a Chicago dog. There's literally no sandwich quite like an Italian beef. And at the right time, at the right hour, it's cold outside, you bite one, it's juicy, it's hot, it's fatty, it's like everything you want. There's nothing more you need in it. A gold star S tier yeah. rating. S tier. Next, Vermont, the Maple Creamy. I have never heard of this, uh, but I've also never thought of Vermont before. So thank you for voting for it. Using my soft serve custard, we cut down the eggs and the vanilla and added maple syrup. That's quite literally it, it's a very simple thing. Now let's taste. We're sharing a cone together, because that's what men do. That is insanely good. That is very good. I'm gonna go A because it was enjoyable. It blew my mind, but compared to 50 other things, I'd just call it an A. I'm going S. That was great. This goes to A tier. You have to understand, there's so many ice creams to choose from. There's no added textures to this. It's one note. It tastes amazing, and it deserves an A tier. It, this is like a Michelin rating, right? It's worth making a trip to try, but nothing more. Coming in at an A tier. Finally, number 50, our last state, California, which is the Cali Burrito. There were a lot of votes here, which beat out street tacos, in and out but did it deserve to? Making it as shockingly simple. Nice hot burrito-sized tortilla spread on some guac, sour cream, topped with a big load of crispy french fries. I know, it sounds weird. Carne asada, add a green or a red salsa, Monterey Jack cheese, roll it up nice and toit. Burrito rolling is not the easiest thing, but I know you can master it. And this is the secret, you must place it in a pan, seam side down, medium heat, toast it, it will lock that burrito shut. Flip, toast the other side, and cut in half. That's a special thing we're looking at. Let's taste. This feels like all the best elements you could put in a burrito, and for that, I'm giving it an S. I'm gonna go S and agree with everything Vikram said. You got the crunch from the french fries, it's creamy, cheesy, beefy. If it's done right, it is perfectly balanced, it doesn't mean any more, it is where it should be, S tier. California burrito, S tier, you're god dang right. But wait, who is really the best out of the S tier list? Only one way to find out. It's time for the S tier rankings. We're gonna rank each and every S tier item from one to 10. One deserves to be on the S tier list, but maybe it's the least exciting. Maybe the flavor isn't totally revolutionary. And 10 being, this is quite literally the greatest S tier item I've ever eaten in my life. So let's begin. First up, California burrito. Vikram, nine. My score, 8.5. Cam, two. What the f there's better burritos out there. I disagree. Just because there's fries on it doesn't mean it's top tier. It feels like a combo of so many things that I love, right? Like shawarma, a burrito, fries in it. I'm also from California and extremely biased. California burrito, 19.5. Next up, Arkansas biscuits with chocolate gravy. 
Vikram, five. My score, one. Cam, one. The fact that this even made it to the S tier list is probably the biggest accomplishment for Arkansas this year. Ever, maybe. <laughs> I liked it so much more than I thought I was gonna be, and I'm still upset that it exists. It's very inventive to me, as stupid as it is. You can get chocolate in a lot of other things, but this combination really hit for me. Arkansas, strong, seven points. Onto Alaska Salmon Dip. Vikram, one. Mine, five. Cam, two. What the f guys. It tastes incredible. There's not one ounce of anything special about this. You get the essence and the enjoyment from the smoked salmon without having to eat loads of it and it tastes great. There are other smoked fish dips even in America that I think I would rather have like a smoked white fish. Alaska, eight points. Next up, Colorado Pork Chili Verde. Vikram, Jesus, a seven? A three. We need a 9.5 or higher to take the lead. Cam, three. And this medium, just such a good way for green chili to come through. And it's one of the dishes where I'd actually go to the state and ask for that. I would not go to the state and ask for it because out of all the things that there are pork belly stew wise, it's a three. It was amazing, but I can think of three different Mexican dishes that are adjacent to this dish that I would much rather have. Green chili pork, 13 points. Maryland crab cakes, Vikram seven, me six, Cam eight. It's the best way to eat crab, to me. Crab cakes are just special, man. I'm from that area of the country. I would seek them out on menus as a child. And I don't think you really see them too many other places. I think there are six. I love them. But if I was given all sorts of choices of the things that we ate today, I just wouldn't grab them immediately. Total 21, and our new leader is Maryland Crab Cakes. Massachusetts Clam Chowder. Vikram, two. Me, two. Cam, well, four, whoa, okay. One of my most favorite soups of all time, just so you know. But there are at least four or five soups I can think of that are almost identical in flavor or borderline the same. It's not that special of a soup. Funny enough he says that, today was my first time having clam chowder, but it tasted like I've had it before. That's why I'm giving it a two. I just love clam chowder. <laughs> <laughs> Massachusetts with love and eight. Here comes a big one. Louisiana gumbo. Vikram, a big nine. Mine, seven. This might take the lead. Cam, six. I don't want to eat gumbo when it's 115 degrees outside. I didn't see it as a seasonal thing. All year round, I'd enjoy it. You can't really get a bad bite of gumbo, and that's why I ranked it so high. It's very based off of so many different cultures that you can go around the world and find something similar to gumbo. With 22 points, we have a new leader, but we have three big guns remaining. Georgia coming in with lemon pepper wet. Vikram an 8.5, mine a 6.5, and Cam gives us an eight. Out of all the wings in the world, this is definitely one of the top ones for sure. There's something special about this wing, but there's nothing special about wings. I agree with that, but that's why I gave it a 6.5. Not revolutionary. A new leader with 23 points, two more remaining. Italian beef, Vikram a 10. That's what I thought. A seven, and Cam comes in with a seven. Out of all the sandwiches I've ever had one of the few sandwiches that I'm like, this does not need and should never have cheese. It's just good on its own. I think an Italian beef is one of the most well-balanced sandwiches you can eat. It's the only sandwich like this that exists. What other sandwich is mostly liquid? It's inventive, it's tangy, it's sweet, and it's the top sandwich for me. Illinois, 24 points. A new leader. That only leaves one more. The Oklahoma Fried Onion Burger. Here we go. Vikram, a nine. Mine, a nine. We need a seven seven or higher to win this, and Cam has not been the nicest. And Cam comes in with a seven. We have a winner, the Oklahoma Fried Onion Burger with 25 points. I crave this item by itself. It's an amazing burger, but did it reinvent the wheel? No. Fair. Listen, it's America. There's nothing better than a burger. And this is definitely one of the top ways to make a burger. You just can't beat melted cheese, grilled onions, and a smash patty. The burger might not have been created in America, but the burger was owned by America, and it feels righteous that it won today. There's a takeaway from this video, and that is that there's great food all over the United States of America. Even the ones that rank low, I'm sure there are places that make it fantastic. I encourage you to venture out. Try your local restaurants. Try restaurants all over the US. There's great food everywhere. Thank you to everyone who submitted your favorite food in your state. We wouldn't have been able to make this video without you. Greatly appreciated. And don't forget, my cookbook is officially out, and there are recipes in this very video that we use. It's available now. Go and get it. The link's in the description. Click it, order it. It helps us a ton. It's all about that texture, baby, not just flavor. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.